none of us have a monopoly on truth. Thank you for that. And uh, up next, we have Kelly. Kelly, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, uh, we'd love to have your question for Maria. Okay, I'll be brief, but I'm really enjoying your eloquency, your faith, very practical and logical, very humane. And I just wanted to know, um, how long do you pray? How, I mean, when do you pray? How long do you meditate? And what do you meditate about? In the Course in Miracles, no, not just in the Course in Miracles, in any religious, serious religious or spiritual um, system that I have ever read about or known anything about, um, there is emphasis placed on the morning. When you wake up in the morning is when your mind is most open to receive the sort of worldly download. If you go immediately to television, computer, phone, newspaper, you're downloading the consciousness of the world, which is very fear-laden, particularly today. It's very, very important in those, before you go to the thinking of the world, go to the thinking of God. I am a Course in Miracles student, and I also do Transcendental Meditation, but no, there are many, you know, there's one truth spoken in many different ways. If you don't know what your particular meditation or prayer path would be, which it sounds like perhaps you don't, I promise you, if you ask in your heart, books will fall in your feet at your feet within two or three days. I wrote a book called The Return to Love, which is sort of like the cliff notes of A Course in Miracles. You might feel moved to open, uh, 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 move to do that. You might feel moved to go to Marianne.com where I, I, you can actually get the 365 day, days of meditation exercises into your inbox. But there's Buddhist meditation. There's uh, uh, Islamic meditation. There is uh, other Christian and Christic meditations. There is, um, you know, and there's the, all the mindfulness stuff out there these days that, that stays in a more secular context. With today's world, you get on 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 the internet. Uh, I promise you, um, you can find it. The thing about about the Course in Miracles that I love is that it is a very specific curriculum that has to do with uh, relinquishing and dismantling a thought system of fear, and and substituting a thought system of love. Any serious uh, meditation practice will include some kind of mantra like that, some kind of sound sentence or something. It is, it goes beyond relaxation. You know, a lot of people say, well, I meditate walking through the woods. Well, actually, no, you don't, because that's relaxing and beautiful and fabulous and healing. And I'm not in any way minimizing that. But meditation is a practice where your brain literally emits it from brain waves, And that includes an actual technique. There are many of them. Um, when you ask me how long, when you do transcendental meditation, it is uh, 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening. In The Course in Miracles, it starts with about a minute and it builds up to five minutes an hour, it builds up to 15 minutes twice a day and so forth. But the practice that is correct for you will appear in your life and seek, seek to follow it and remember what I said about the morning. Thank you for that. And uh, up next, we have Ginger. Ginger, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself for Marianne Williamson. Hi. Um, I have a point of view towards vegetarianism or veganism um, that's, uh, and I'm curious about your reaction. Uh, I um, I'm just uh, emotionally unable to kill animals, including uh, worms. Even from my early childhood, when my mother would garden, I would, I didn't want to be there because I didn't want to see a worm get cut up by a spade. And so when I became an adult, somebody uh, persuaded me to become a vegetarian. Uh, this was 50 years ago, um, and, but I didn't, like you, I guess, I didn't really know the ins and outs of it. I didn't, nobody told me to take vitamin B12, et cetera. Um, but I, I finally developed a, the position that if I couldn't kill an animal, I didn't have the right to eat it. So I really am opposed mostly to um, farm-raised animals, um, uh, less so those that are 
allowed to roam free. Um, but I have no problem with people who hunt. I couldn't do it, yeah. so I don't need it. Right. But I don't have a problem with other people doing it. Um, so what I can do uh, emotionally is I can steal an egg from a chicken. Um, and therefore, I eat eggs. Um, I'm I just understand eating. what you're saying. And uh, I think what you're saying is a very evolved position. I think that whether or not someone, um, uh, this is obviously an individual decision that people make, but I do think that collectively we have a right to uh, oppose and to oppose vigorously uh, cruelty to animals. And animal factory farms are cruel. And animal factory farming should end. And that's, I believe, something that is bubbling up in the culture. Um, I certainly carried it forward in my presidential campaign and will continue to do that. Many people do, obviously. Um, animal factory farming should absolutely end. I think your, your personal position on animals is very evolved and I admire it very greatly. 